around that. It's Breakfast with Sally Nugent and John Kay. Calls for a public inquiry after a rogue breast surgeon is convicted of intentionally wounding his patients. Ian Patterson was accused of playing God by carrying out completely unnecessary operations. Lawyers think he could have hundreds, even thousands of victims. Good morning. It is Saturday the 29th of April. Also ahead this morning, negotiating Brexit. EU leaders meet in Brussels to discuss how to tackle future talks with Theresa May. Another North Korean missile test, but the US military says the ballistic rocket blew up seconds after takeoff. As he marks 100 days in office, Donald Trump becomes the first US president for more than three decades to address the American gun lobby. No longer will federal agencies be coming after law-abiding gun owners. While in the sport, it's the richest bout in British boxing history. The countdown is on for tonight's World Heavyweight Showdown as Anthony Joshua meets former champion Vladimir Klitschko. And it is one of Britain's oldest sports. Oh, well caught, miss. A fine bit of feeling that will make her the pride of the school. Ra ra. In finding out why Stoolball is making a comeback. Rah, rah, looking forward to that. Uh, Sarah's got the weather. Hi, Sarah. Good morning. It's a largely dry day today with some sunshine around too. Some of us will see a little bit of rain tomorrow. I'll have a full forecast for you in about 15 minutes. See you then. Sarah, thank you. Morning. First to our main story today. There are growing calls for a public inquiry following the conviction of a breast surgeon who carried out a series of needless operations. Ian Patterson was found guilty of intentionally wounding his patients at two private hospitals in the West Midlands. Now solicitors working on the case say the true number of his victims could be in the hundreds or even in the thousands, as Simon Cleverson reports. Patients are meant to be able to trust their doctor, but Ian Patterson practised the exact opposite and betrayed his patients on some scale. He told people they were at risk of cancer and operated on them unnecessarily. The breast surgeon worked in private and NHS hospitals in the West Midlands and while staff in the public sector now hold each other to account, lawyers representing some of the victims are today calling for a full independent inquiry into oversight of private sector healthcare. One senior surgeon says there is some way to go. No matter what the quality of surgery is in the, in the private sector, there is much less observation going on and much, more, much less recording of detail than there is in the NHS. The private provider where Patterson operated, Spire Healthcare, has told the BBC that the decision as to whether a public inquiry with a wider remit is appropriate is not one for Spire, but adds that the company would of course fully cooperate if a public inquiry was deemed appropriate. Shirley Maroney's sister Marie was one of Ian Patterson's NHS patients. The surgeon originally carried out an incomplete mastectomy instead of the double mastectomy she'd asked for. She then had a further double mastectomy which delayed her chemotherapy. My sister was a police officer for 30 years. She believed in the justice system, she believed in fairness and quite frankly this wasn't fair, this wasn't just what happened to her. Marie died in 2008 of secondary cancer in her lungs. It's impossible to know the extent to which Ian Patterson's failures contributed to her death. The criminal case centred on the treatment of nine other women and one man. But solicitors say there are hundreds of patients now looking for compensation. Ian Patterson has been told he'll face prison when he's sentenced next month. Simon Clemerson, BBC News. European Union leaders are meeting in Brussels today to formally agree their negotiating stance for Brexit. The President of the European Council, Donald Tusk, has said the EU won't discuss its future relationship with the UK until it's happy that enough progress has been made on settling past issues. Those include the so-called divorce settlement, which is the money the EU believes it would still be owed by the UK. And we will be live with all the latest reaction from Brussels from 7 o'clock. Theresa May will campaign in Scotland today for the first time since calling the general election. The Conservatives currently hold one Scottish seat at Westminster, but opinion polls suggest that the support for the party in Scotland is growing. Meanwhile, Jeremy Corbyn will urge young people to claim their future by voting Labour in the election when he speaks in East London later on. He'll highlight figures that show 2.4 million young people are missing from the electoral register. 
North Korea has test-fired